Well hello there you scrub lords, and welcome to another beginner's guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 worst things to spend your money on in War Thunder as a new player. I have been playing War Thunder for almost 6 years now and through much trial and error have figured out some of the worst ways of pissing your money away without very much in the way of return. I should also note that these 10 money wasters are not listed in terms of best to worst or in this case worst to worst. Everybody's situation is different, so think of it as a list rather than a best to worst sort of scenario. Also, I do not really plan on making this type of content a regular thing, but if you want to see more of these, then please let me know. So without further ado, let's get started. So, number 10. Not waiting on sales for premium time. If you've decided to seriously invest some time in the game and you want to try and work your way up the upper tiers, having a premium account is a must to keep you from going insane, especially at the highest tiers available. However, that nearly 15,000 GE price tag for the year's worth of premium is halved every year in early November for Gaijin's birthday down to just over 7,500 Golden Eagles. This is by far the best time to buy premium and is the best way of saving literally hundreds on premium time. If this price tag is still too much for you and or you simply do not have the time to make best use of that premium account time like any normal person wouldn't, do yourself a favor and only buy premium account time in 24 hour intervals. This will allow you to maximize the time you play while also saving you from having to spill half your paycheck every month or so. Other alternatives to premium account time include the purchasing of premium vehicles and talismans which never expire, but require you to play those specific vehicles to get the bonuses. In addition, purchasing low tier talismans and premiums are not really recommended for grinding as you will quickly outstrip any benefits they will give you since talismans and premiums are only good for researching vehicles only one tier above or below them. After that, they receive a penalty and are often outdone in normal RP earnings by standard tech tree vehicles. Number 9. Buying high tier premiums before you reach tier 3. War Thunder above all is a game of personal skill, mental ability, and map knowledge. If a player has reached the upper tiers of the game, they often have gained valuable experience in what to do and what not to do. Of course, there are always exceptions to this rule, but never mind them. The biggest mistake I see many people make when it comes to not only prematurely ruining their experience, but also throwing away much in the way of cash, is the purchase of Tier 4 and Tier 5 premiums right out of the gate without first having at least played up to the latter half of Tier 3. The Tier 4 and Tier 5 premiums especially, while definitely unique and interesting, serve to not only pit a new player against often vastly more experienced opponents, but very often do not earn the level of income they are hoping for from such a high tier purchase so early on. This is mostly down to the fact that earning money in War Thunder is almost entirely determined by personal performance in battle and not whether or not a vehicle is premium. Having premium vehicles or account time certainly helps, but at the end of the day, your personal performance matters way more than any premium purchase can account for. As such, you are far better off playing low tiers up to tier 3 and learning through experience rather than attempting to force yourself into a difficult scenario having already spent a large sum of money. In addition to this, trying to figure out 20 different things at once. Take your time, learn how the game works, and once you reach the first real grind wall going into tier 4, then consider purchasing a tier 4 or higher premium. Number 8. Pre-ordering premium vehicles. Every now and then, Gaijin will announce the introduction of a new premium vehicle before a major patch. Oftentimes, they will bundle said vehicle with either a unique camouflage or decals or sometimes a small amount of Golden Eagles to incentivize the pre-order. The problem is, is that War Thunder's meta changes so much from patch to patch that it will be impossible to tell whether or not a new premium vehicle will be worth the price tag put on it. A perfect example of what I'm talking about is the Magach 3, a tier 5 premium medium tank which is essentially an Israeli modification of the M48 Patton. The vehicle, while not terrible, massively suffers from the L7-105mm gun being totally inaccurate. Its 105mm APDS couldn't hit the broadside of a barn from the inside and does no damage when it does. Its Hesh is nearly useless as anything other than a glorified AG round due to the massive nerfs leveled against Hesh across the board. And the heat rounds on it, while quite effective, still lack the damage and cost nearly a thousand credits per trigger pull, meaning that firing large volumes of it can defeat the purpose of the vehicle being a premium. In addition, the armor is kind of subpar and will not stop anything at its tier despite being a relatively large and slow-moving target. 
This vehicle was bought in large numbers by people expecting it to be a good vehicle to grind towards the flashy new M1 Abrams last patch. However, people did not pay attention to the potential issues that were mentioned above and caused large amount of impulse buying, resulting in people spending 50 plus dollars on a largely mediocre vehicle. On the flip side, in the same patch, the premium version of the AMX-30 without the 20mm autocannon was announced as well. And before this patch drop, the AMX-30 had not only been missing penetration on its stock heat round, but also had extremely poor damage as it was using the old early heat damage model. However, upon its release, all the AMX-30s received a large buff to penetration and damage on their heat rounds, bringing them up to par with the L7 heat FS rounds of the other nations. Not only is the AMX-30 a lower BR than those vehicles, but it now gets essentially the top ammunition for the said vehicles as a stock round to fire for free, making the AMX-30 one of the best purchases for a Tier 5 Premium. These two examples show that you cannot trust the pre-orders to give you what you want. The vehicles could either change drastically from when it's announced to something better, or it could end up being one of the biggest money drains possible. So however flashy that new premium is, do not pre-order it, wait for the reviews to come out. Number 7. Buying more than 5 crew slots. When you start the game, you're presented with 2 crew slots and a free third one for completing the tutorial. While adequate for initially starting the game, one easy way to throw away your GE at an astonishingly high rate is to purchase more than 5 crew slots early on. The reason I say this is a bad idea for new players is because you ideally want your crews to be as good as they can possibly be, and spending Golden Eagles to get more crew slots only spreads out your crew skill levels over many different crews, leading to none of your crews being all that good when you start to reach higher tiers, when having a good crew can make the difference between life and death on a regular basis. Ideally, you want your crew's skill points to be focused on a couple of crews to boost their efficiency and help ready them for the higher tiers. If you plan on playing a mode like RRB, on the other hand, focusing all your attention and vehicles onto one or two crews is not a bad idea at all, especially when it comes to tank or plane arcade battles and tank RB. Having a dedicated tank and aircraft-focused crew can massively help in the long run and can save you much in the way of SL and GE down the line when moving high-tier vehicles, which can cost you hundreds of thousands of SL. Number 6. Spending Golden Eagles on Crews Speaking of spending money on crews, let's quickly talk about throwing your Golden Eagles at crew skills themselves. While this is certainly not the worst thing you can spend your money on, the main reason for it being on this list is the sheer cost of it. Aircraft and tank crews have different maximum crew levels. For aircraft it is 75, and for tanks it is 150. It is unknown at the moment, however, what naval forces crew level caps will be, but it can be assumed that it will probably be more than tanks. To completely max out an aircraft crew in all skills, you would have to spend around 3,000 Golden Eagles to make sure that you get all crew skills maximized. For tanks, you are looking at spending closer to 4,500 to 5,000 Golden Eagles to maximize your crew. And this cost is per crew type. So if you wanted to max out a crew slot in both aircraft and tanks, you are looking at spending anywhere from six to 8,000 Golden Eagles total on that crew slot alone. This is why you must be careful when spending money on your crews. Ask yourself whether or not it is truly worth spending that much for a specific crew. You would be much better off using this feature to boost essential crew skills like weapon reloading, leadership, tank driving, g-force tolerance, stamina, and vitality. Number 5. Acing vehicles you won't actually play. Speaking of buying qualifications, purchasing ace crews for all of your vehicles will not actually help you. The problem is, is that when you ace something, your crew is only aced for that specific vehicle. Even if you have an alternate version of that vehicle, such as a premium skin variant, the ace qualification only applies to the variant it was either earned on or purchased. For example, the Tiger II has a premium version of itself called the SLA-16. Buying an ace crew for the standard tech tree Tiger IIH will not apply to the premium version. Similar to Talismans, it is recommended that you save ace crew purchases for vehicles you really, really enjoy. Number 4. Buying low tier vehicle modifications with Golden Eagles. As a new player, another way you can quickly drain your wallet is by purchasing some of the low tier vehicle modifications with your Golden Eagles. 
The problem is that while there is some adjustment of pricing as you go up the tiers and ranks, lower tier vehicle modifications are priced far higher than they are actually worth. You need the battle experience far more than you need those tier 2 tank parts. Believe me when I say that parts on a Panzer IV F2 or an early Sherman are not worth the 100 or so GE. Grinding them out only takes a couple of good games anyways, so save yourself some money and don't buy them with Golden Eagles. Number 3. Spending Golden Eagles on Backup Vehicles Backups are always nice to have for specific vehicles that you play often. However, some vehicles cost literally hundreds of Golden Eagles per backup spawn. In addition, backups are only able to be used in arcade battles and tank realistic battles. If you play either ARB or Enduring Confrontation, you either have only one life or are spending lions to respawn your aircraft. In tank simulator battles, your number of spawns are already fixed and backups cannot be utilized. In addition to this, there are at least two ways of getting backups without spending money on the game. The first is through random post-battle loot boxes that can sometimes drop backups for you. The second way is through the purchasing of universal backup packages using the war bonds which are earned by completing specific tasks as you play. You can purchase these packs of 5 or 10 universal backups for 300 and 500 war bonds respectively. These can then be activated on any vehicle of your choosing that you own. They are pretty easy to get, as simply playing will no doubt earn you a steady supply of war bonds, which you can use to purchase the respective rewards in the war bond shop. Number 2. Converting Golden Eagles to Silver Lions This next one is a big mistake that I see people doing all the time early on. The fact of the matter is that the conversion rates between a Golden Eagle and a Silver Lion are absolutely horrible. 1,000 lions will cost you 3 golden eagles, which means there is a conversion rate of only about 333 lions per eagle. As a War Thunder lacks a conversion slider like World of Warships or World of Tanks, you are stuck with purchasing vastly overpriced preset packages, the most expensive of which costs 3,000 golden eagles, which only nets you about 1.3 million lions in return. And while Gaijin claims you will save 33% off this purchase, this price has never changed even back when I joined the game in 2012. This makes purchasing lions with eagles nowhere near worth it, as top tier tanks for example cost 1.25 million to purchase and crew, with an extra million on top of it to purchase an expert crew qualification. So in simple layman's terms, do not purchase lions with golden eagles. It is a total ripoff. You are far better spending the 3,000 golden eagles on premium time or a cheap premium vehicle. Number 1. Converting Free RP As you have played a few games, you are sure to have noticed that every battle you play you earn a little of what is called convertible RP. Players will often call this global RP or free RP as a holdover from games like World of Tanks. Unlike Wargaming's titles though, this RP is not actually free. Unless you spend the Golden Eagles to convert them, they literally do nothing for you. Essentially, they allow you to skip the research grind by paying for that RP to unlock a vehicle you are currently researching. And while extremely cheap early on, it becomes incredibly expensive to do that at top tiers when you are spending upwards of 8,000 Golden Eagles to convert a single vehicle. However, this is really only an option for people who have earned enough free RP that after playing a long time, they can do this however long they want as long as their wallets hold up. For a new player, however, it not only figuratively speaking beats the crap out of your wallet, it also drains you of valuable early game experience which is critical to learning the game and enjoying yourself later on. As a new player, doing this only hurts you and offers no real benefits to your enjoyment of the game early on. So I hope this has helped you guys who are new to the game and are wondering where you should put your funds. Hopefully this has provided you with some ideas as to what to actually spend your money on and what to save for. Now this video could make War Thunder come off as a money grabbing game. That is really not the case. These are simply the 10 things that I wish for people to avoid spending their money on in order to increase their enjoyment of the game later on. Playing up until tier 3, for example, before buying your first premium is a great way of figuring out do you really want to continue playing with this game and do you really want to invest in it? If the answer is no, then you haven't spent any money and no harm done, only some of your time. However, if you reach tier 3 and you're like, 
you know what, I really enjoy this and I want to keep going, that is when you should start considering investing in the game some way. So I hope this has helped everybody, like I said earlier, and if you have any other suggestions or things that I missed or things that you think that should have been mentioned in this, please leave them down in the comments section below. Without further ado, this has been Many Miles Away, keep your tracks checked, keep your binos in place, keep around on the tube, and I will see all of you guys in the next video and or stream.